Good luck. <laughs> Thank have you. Have fun. <laughs> Federal Appeals Court Judge Gilbert Merritt is about to have his brain scanned while he makes punishment decisions. He's the 17th judge to volunteer for a study of judges' brains here at Vanderbilt University in Nashville. We've been incredibly fortunate and excited by seeing how much the judges care about this study and how, how willing they are to participate. Do they have a feeling, do you sense, that they're really helping the justice system by understanding the brain better yeah. through these tests? Yeah, it's, 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 they're really curious. It's like they want to know what goes on in their mind. Okay, Your Honor, we're going to go ahead and get started with the task now. I just Judge Merritt will be reading scenarios of crimes and rating his punishment decision on a scale of zero to nine. Previous research by the Vanderbilt team has suggested that judges tend to put more weight than lay people on the intent of an offender than on the harm he or she caused. If you see the judge paying more attention to the intent of the wrongdoer and the lay person paying more attention to the harm done, isn't that because some part of the brain in one is at more active than it is in the other person? Otherwise, they wouldn't come to a different decision, would they? Yes, you're absolutely right. Like, have That's you identified that difference? Not yet. Uh, we're still acquiring data as we are uh, doing today, and we need a lot of subjects to be able to distinguish these, what I think will be uh, subtle differences. Leaving Judge Merritt to settle in for a grueling hour or more in the scanner, Ready? Yep. I find myself lending a hand in an ongoing study of a part of the brain the Vanderbilt team has already identified as probably playing a role okay. in punishment Whatever decisions. Right. Okay, this is the right, uh, left ear? Yep. Boom. Graduate right. student Sonia Poltoratsky will be last. having a region in the front of her brain zapped by a series of powerful magnetic pulses this region, a small spot in her right prefrontal cortex, appears to become active while people are deciding whether a harmful act deserves to be punished. Now tell me something. This seems a little eerie. What, what kind of a pulse is she getting? She's getting a magnetic pulse. Yes. yes. And it, it, you, you know it's harmless, right? I mean, it's no yes. long-lasting uh, effect. Right. But you're knocking out the, the use of a little part of her brain. That's right. So, Sonia, you're about to get a few Tesla right through the head. How, how do you feel about that? Um, as good as one can feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, I've been in several studies before, and I conduct research myself, so I know that it is um, harmless in the long run and beneficial for, for knowledge, so I'm okay with the little face twitch for that. <laughs> Does that feel pretty comfortable, Sonia? Great. There'll be a five second delay, and then you'll start feeling the pulses. Oh, she felt the pulse, huh? The train of pulses continues for a half an hour. Its effect is to knock out that small spot on the surface of Sonia's brain for about another 15 or 20 minutes after the zapping ends. Sonia, do you feel any different in that part of your head now? Can you feel anything? I don't. Yeah, no, I just, feel totally just fine. Feels normal. Mm -hmm. right? So yeah. the difference is supposed to come out when you answer these questions. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sonia is presented with a series of scenarios similar to the ones Judge Merritt is reading in the scanner and also rating them on a scale of one to nine. Mary is particularly proud of and attached to her current puppy. This sounds like bad news for the puppy to me. <laughs> A few nights later, there is a large thunderstorm. The noise and darkness hides John well as he sneaks into Mary's yard and kidnaps the puppy. When Mary goes to the dog house the next morning and finds her puppy gone, she's horrified and she becomes depressed. What do you think of that? Anything? Would you give him anything for that? Um, I think I would give him a five for that. So he didn't do anything particularly violent, but I do have a soft spot in my heart for puppies. Right. And he only wants his love, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, poor guy. Surprisingly, subjects like Sonia punish crimes less when this region in the prefrontal cortex is disabled, possibly because it's less able to piece together information coming from the rest of the brain, including regions involved in emotion. René Marois believes his research in fact points to an important role for emotion in the way people make decisions about punishment. So possibly your work might point to the idea that including an emotional element might give you a fairer decision than just being purely rational? We think so. Uh-huh. That's, that's a really counterintuitive idea, isn't it? Yes. 
Um, I, it, there's quite a mounting in evidence that suggests that emotion really is one heuristic by which we uh, come up with the decisions to punish and how much to punish. Mm. Judge Merritt's session in the scanner, during which he'd handed out mostly ones on the zero to nine scale, is finally over. It'll take many more volunteers like him to really pick apart the workings of a judge's brain. But in his case, it certainly seems that his judgments were colored by emotion. Do you tend to, in, in real life, to give many ones? I mean, or do you have a cutoff point? You say? I would say I'm a lenient judge. Yes. Yes. And what's the, what's the, what's behind that? Is it just a whole lot of compassion, or have you, do you have is it is it out of a lot of reasoning that you've arrived at that? People are by no means perfect. You know, we have to take into account we have flaws that are very deep, and all of us have significant flaws, and so we ought not to get over legalized. Mm -hmm. You, did, you sound like a really unusual, non-judgmental judge. I try to be a human being first. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. I wouldn't mind coming up before you. <laughs> next, next, if I ever get in trouble, I'm going to look for you. <laughs> I don't believe that's going to happen. <laughs>